And Otto, I mean, obviously the, the Eastern Cape has always been spoken of as an area that has uh, plentiful talent there. Uh, what are some of the challenges in, in terms of harnessing that talent or ensuring that it's streamlined so that the talented kids that uh, could go on to play professional rugby are, are able to get the assistance they need? And, you know, there's obviously been the, the, the Kings as a, as a franchise that was created there, but hasn't always had the success it needs perhaps to be that end product for the, the kids to go through and play for. Um, but how, how do you see the best way to streamline the talent from the Eastern Cape and, and to get it through so that, that kids with the ability to play professional rugby aren't lost to our system? That's a very good question. And I think, you know, that's the kind of debate or discussion that needs to be spoken quite a lot until we come up with a solution. Because I think the biggest problem that the Eastern Cape has, it doesn't have uh, a lot of money in, in, the, in the rugby being put into to the growth and development of rugby. Look, at, if you think about it, at the bigger unions, you know, they've got the big sponsors and they've got the universities and, the, and that feeder, the player feeder, where players get an opportunity and get exposed to the kind of level that uh, each and every rugby player needs to get exposed to. So you mentioned the Kings, you know, it, it's one out of, you know, the, the Eastern Cape is huge. So a lot of that talent, some of it gets taken and, and uh, moved elsewhere or the guys that don't get an opportunity, they just fall by the wayside. And if I can make an example, a guy like Makazole, you know, we only found out about him when he was uh, in his prime at 26, 27. Mm. You know, how much more would he have been if he maybe would have known about him at 23? But it's all about that opportunity, Craig. And I think, yeah. you know, money plays a big part in sport. And uh, the more we can invest in, in the development of, 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 the, of the game, the more that these, op these youngsters can get exposed at that level. Instead of uh, the bigger unions coming and taking one or two or three, and then the rest uh, gets just lost into the system. So I believe, you know, if, if, if we can invest money in the Eastern Cape in the development of, uh, of that talent, then we can have a lot more youngsters coming through the system and, and, and uh, getting exposed uh, at that high level rugby. Sure. And Otto, maybe we can just wrap up just chatting about um, a couple of those success stories that have come from the Eastern Cape. I mean, obviously we've had um, Sia Khaleesi, the, the captain from the box, uh, hailing from the Eastern Cape, and Lukanya Am and, and Makazuluma Pimpi, as you've mentioned. Um, can you touch on those three guys and, and just how inspiring you think it has been for them to make it to the level they have and to, be, to become World Cup winners? I mean, do you, do you feel like that success is you know, filtered through to the community of the Eastern Cape and only served to further fuel the, the rugby spirit in, in those parts? Uh, I'm so proud when I see those guys. Uh, see, you mentioned Sia uh, going all the way. And I think, you know, listening to his story, and uh, it, just, it just fills you with joy because of where he comes from and how far he's gone. You know, another story is uh, Bagazole, you know, listening to his story once again and to see where he is now. So I think it's, it's an inspirational story for the youngsters back in the Eastern Cape because there they can see and they can relate to those guys and they know that, you know, they can also achieve their, their dreams and their goals. And, and I believe, like I've said uh, countless times, all of these youngsters just need opportunities and just, they just need exposure. Uh, you know, it's inspiring, you know, having three guys from the Eastern Cape going on to become World Cup winners. You know, everyone in the Eastern Cape is speaking highly of those guys. And I think the biggest thing for me is, is how humble they are in, sure. in, the, in, this, in the limelight. You know, they're, they're big superstars at the moment and yet they still remain grounded. And uh, I've spoken to a few times with Magazole and Lucanio, and they, you can hear how much they want to still uh, give back to the, to the kids of the Eastern Cape, you know, be it motivational speaking, be it going to visit the schools. 
especially when they were there during their downtime in December. So that for me is very good because they, the youngsters back in the Eastern Cape need to, needs to see them up close and, and ask them questions and hear them speaking to them rather than always seeing them on TV. And I think once they see them up close, then they can really uh, get inspired themselves and, and also see themselves in those guys and, uh, and know that, you know, they can also achieve whatever they want to achieve. For sure. Um, by the way, just finally, uh, if I can ask you specifically about uh, Makazolo, um, what, I mean, being a former winger yourself, I mean, it's sometimes I, I think it's quite difficult for people to put a finger on what, what has made him so effective over the last couple of years. What are the things that he's done to become probably one of the best wingers in the world at the moment? You know, like you say, someone who maybe developed a little bit later um, than the traditional young 22-year-old or 23-year-old that breaks through onto the international scene. But uh, now almost in his later 20s has become such a well-rounded player. I mean, what set him apart in your eyes or made him so effective? I think there's one thing that uh, is always going to be a factor when it comes to a winger, and that's out-and-out pace. And that's one thing Makazole has uh, in, you know, whenever he gets an opportunity, he is guaranteed to finish that opportunity nine out of 10 times. And you mentioned uh, now that he's a well-rounded player. And I think, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, when he came through, I think uh, perhaps at the Cheetahs and the Sharks, we could see, you know, he didn't get that uh, foundation, uh, foundational training that guys at that level should have had, you know, the, the basics and how to deal with certain things. So, and now that he's been exposed at that level, he's actually got that high uh, top level coaching where he's actually developed his game and now he's the international player that, you know, uh, that we, 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 he's always had the opportunity, the potential, but now he's fulfilling that potential. And I think, I remember when I first played against him, and uh, I, I, he's quite a, a hard guy. You know, he's, he's, he's solid. He's, he's, he's very hard, and he's, he, people doubted his. Uh, his uh, you know, they said he wasn't uh, strong enough in, in defense, he, in his tackles. But I always knew, and I, and I think the biggest thing was uh, confidence. When uh, you know, when it comes through. When he came through to the big union, you know, he needed to first believe that he deserves to be there and not uh, because I think the challenge that you find yourself in is your, your question uh, because you've always watched and uh, you've always uh, aspired to be there. But now when you are there, you're perhaps asking yourself, is it really happening? Do I deserve to be here? And it took him time. And now we're seeing that, you know, it's settled. He believes in himself, the whole team backs him and everyone around him uh, believes in him. So now you're seeing his full potential coming out. So, you know, I believe we still have a lot to see from Makazole. Uh, this winning the World Cup and scoring that, that wonderful try has given him so much confidence. And, uh, you know, I, I wish him all the best. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure so he'll play a lot more games in, in the in the Springbok jersey. And lastly, I think the biggest thing that he has is, is that humility. He understands that uh, he can't be, he can't think he can't relax now and think because he's won the World Cup, he's uh, he's done it all. You know, he, he still wants to achieve a lot more, and uh, you know he'll still work as hard as he as if he was uh, he was not a regular at the Springboks. And uh, you know, like I said, I wish him all the best. Great. Well, Ado, thank you so much for making time and uh, for all the the work that your foundation is doing. Uh, yeah, you know, we we all hope it uh, continues to do the the good work. And uh, during lockdown, um, yeah, just uh, best wishes to you and your family. Thanks a lot, Craig. And uh, best of wishes to you too, bud. Thank you.